I think we probably would all agree that with all the technological advances that we get, and therefore benefits that come from them, uh, we also then have to put up with a lot of stuff that we didn't have to before. I remember well years ago that if we left, my wife was one place and I was another, and kids were one place, and we didn't get to talk to them for a while, that's okay. But now we have cell phones. And now if we leave a house without a cell phone, we are falling apart because, oh, what if they need us? Well, what if they needed me back then? Didn't think about it. You know why? The technology wasn't there. So we put up with stuff to make things better, but it also ends up making things worse. I read that in 1971, the first prototype for a caller ID was created. Isn't that a great thing? To be able to say, oh, nope, don't want to talk to that person. That's a good deal. And so that caller ID is really good. But now they've worked a way around it, haven't they? Now I keep getting phone calls, it look like, from local numbers. And it every time is not. So nope, don't want to answer that. Here's the deal. If you have called me and your name is not in my contact list, I'm not answering. Because I don't know who you are. Ah, but we have that fixed voice message. Yeah, those voice message machines been around a while. And now we can figure out, do I want to talk to this person or not? Let me listen and see if this is something I want to respond to. Guess what? That's exactly what we're talking about today. In the very same way that we've just described the physical side of phone calling the Lord is calling us. Here's what I know. There are so many times that I hear people say, I wish, this is maybe not exactly word for word what they say, but this is what they intend. I just wish that I had caller ID. And I would know that it says, hello, this is God calling, talk to me. I know God's calling. I have no doubt about that. I also know that we would like to know more specifically that he's calling or more specifically that he's calling us to something. What does he really want? He is calling. For a few minutes today, Think about with me this idea that the Lord is calling. There is no doubt but that He is. I know the Lord is calling each one of us because Peter said the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, but is long-suffering for us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I fully believe that God's intention, His desire, His whole process is about saying, I don't want you to be lost. Everything He has ever done is for the purpose of saying, I don't want you to be lost. God wants all people to be saved, regardless of what some teaching there might be. I fully believe God wants everyone to be saved. But I also know this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God says that he wants us to be saved, but it's faith that brings us to him. It is faith that is the way by which we get to him. And that faith can only come through the word, 
Romans 10 and 15. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, which is why Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 14, God calls us by my gospel to obtain the glory of Jesus Christ. Today, the Lord is calling each one of us Each one. It's not just an occasional call. It's just not a check-in kind of thing. He is on a continual basis calling us because He wants us to come to Him. Now I want you to think with me about the text of John chapter 6. If you have your Bibles and want to turn over there... This is a very interesting chapter to me. And the way that it unfolds says a whole lot about people in general and about God's relationship to us. And therefore, He is calling us. And and for this point, I think we should understand the Bible this way. He has left us a voice message. And here it is. Now, there are some times when I finally get around to it and I scroll down on my phone and it says, new voicemail. Okay, so I hit the button and it says, you have seven unlistened to voicemails. Oh, I missed seven calls? Hmm, don't know how I did that. So then I go back and listen to all these phone calls. And sometimes, immediately when they start, I know this is not something I care at all about, and I hit delete, and it's gone. There are some times I listen to the voicemail, and I say, oh, I missed that. I better mark that. And sometimes I hear a voicemail, oh, that reminds me. I better call so-and-so because they want me to talk to them. I think the Bible could very well in our culture be understood as his voice message to us. What's the message of John chapter 6? Notice the text of verses 60 through 66 first. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Well, now, what is he talking about? What were the disciples having a problem with? Well, let's go back in the chapter and notice a couple of things. As the chapter opens, there are a vast multitude of people, vast multitude. I don't know it's even possible to know how many there are. But I can imagine that it would have covered an entire hillside as Jesus is speaking down beside the the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And, And the crowd got so big on one occasion that he had to get into a boat to keep them from pushing up against him. In this crowd of people who have been following Jesus all day, it came time to eat and they were hungry. In a miraculous fashion, of course, Jesus fed all of those people. All these multitudes clamoring to hear him, clamoring to be around him, and often saying, will you heal us? He fed every one of them. Then he began to preach and to teach. The food you just ate takes care of the physical body. But he said, I have news for you. If you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. For my flesh and my blood are food indeed. Well, this kind of thought process just baffled them. It was the disciples who said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? But Jesus knew in his heart that his disciples complained. And he said, 
Does this offend you? Does it offend you that I have said these things? What if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was? Notice verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. There are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew in his heart who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he said, therefore I said to you, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of the disciples departed and walked no more with him. What is the voice message? The Lord is calling in the voice message to you and to me is to take part of Jesus. Certainly we have observed the Lord's Supper in a very real way to fit what it was he was discussing here. As of yet, that concept didn't exist. But in the unleavened bread and in the fruit of the vine, of which we have just taken, in a very real tactile way, we have partaken of Jesus. This is what he left us, to have continual contact and memory of him. These people couldn't understand what he was talking about. What do you mean that we have to eat and drink you? That doesn't make any sense. But Jesus said first, I want you to understand this is a hard saying. He didn't disagree with them, did he? He didn't say, oh, no, it's not hard. You just don't understand what you're talking about. No, he's saying it is difficult. Yes, God wants all to be saved. But he doesn't pave the road like a red carpet walk to say, I'll do everything I can to make it as easy as I can for you to be one of mine. No, it's difficult. It's difficult. So, verse 63, this is a contest, a challenge. A challenge between rejecting the flesh and accepting the Spirit. That's what he's talking about. The call is to say, you got to get rid of the flesh and come to the Spirit. The flesh is going to profit nothing. The Spirit will give life. The words that I have left for you are Spirit and life. This voice message from Jesus recorded in Scripture is God's way of saying, I have something for you. you got to leave the flesh, and you got to come to the Spirit. In that group, that multitude of people who were following him, maybe we would think, that is really good. Look at all the people who are following Jesus. He really had an effect. He really had a charisma. He really had a draw. Look at all the people. Let's make it real today. Look at all the people. Isn't this great? Isn't it great to see this vast group of people filling this facility? Well, sure it is. We enjoy it. We look forward to it. It's positive. It says that there is something positive happening here and that 
basically the hearts of people, they want to do what's right. These people wanted to do what was right. They, they wanted benefit of being around Jesus. They wanted the help that he provided. And we fill this building every Sunday morning in the same way that the multitudes thronged Jesus. But what did he say? Jesus looked right at that multitude of people and he said, there are some of you who do not believe. What? These people stayed all day with Jesus. How did they not believe? They didn't even have time to eat. They gave up meals in order to come and be where Jesus was. you telling me they don't believe? Jesus said, that's right. Is it possible that in the group gathered here today, some of us don't believe? Is that possible? I mean, why were these multitudes following Jesus? Oh, because he could make them well when they were sick. He had a charisma. They liked to be around and listen to him. Why? He could multiply food enough for all the people to eat. Why would we not want to be there? But Jesus said, some of you don't believe. Notice verse 65. No one can come to me unless it's been granted to him from my Father. This word give is a word that means there is a contingency connected to it. In Matthew 5 and in verse 42, Jesus had said, Give to him who asks, from him who would borrow of you, do not turn away. I don't think Jesus was intending to say this. I want you to take all the stuff that you have, and I want you to ride down the road, and I want you to start handing it out to people. Just give it away. Just to hand it out. I don't think so. There's a contingency to this give. He said to them, give when they ask. On another occasion, he would say, give when they need. But just to broadcast, just give it all away. Just for the sake of giving it away, not to meet a need, not to help someone. That's not the point that he was trying to get us to understand. Giving and a contingency go together. Jesus said, Unless it's been given, granted by my Father, you can't come to me. In other words, with a contingency, I give this to you. You can come to the Father, and what's the contingency? You have to believe me and accept me where I am. You have to accept this hard teaching that I just gave. And many of the disciples left. Because now they get it. Now it's not just about getting food. Now it's not about just hearing a great oration. Now it's not just about getting healing for the body. No, no, it's far more than that. It's accepting the hard truth that Jesus has just laid before them clearly. You can clamor for food for the body and be profited nothing. Or you can desire 
the food of the flesh, of the spirit, and be profited eternal life. It's a movement away from the world and into the Spirit of God. We've been talking all year about perfection, going on to perfection, letting God have complete control of our lives. That's how to be perfect in the sight of God. And how that happens is to move further away from the connection to the flesh and deeper into the Spirit. He's calling. He's left a voice message. And he's asking me to return his call. Will you today return the call to be a part of his body? Colossians 3 verse 15, In this you were called into one body. Those who come to God are placed in the body of Jesus Christ, the church. Will you hear the call of Jesus and say, I'll be in the body? Will I take the call and return his call today and say, I'll walk in his steps? To this you are also called, that you should walk in his steps. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 To this you were called. What were you called to? Walk in his steps. He suffered for you. You suffer. He had just told them, you're being persecuted for your faith. Don't stop. It's tough. It's not going to be easy. Don't quit. Will you return his call? To follow in that pathway? Or finally, will I return his call today to be his servant? There's an interesting verse that I think we should explore deeper. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 22. All who are called as slaves are the Lord's freedmen. All who are called as free are the Lord's slaves. To those Christians who had become Christians while being slaves of other men, he said, when you became a Christian, you became free. Isn't that cool? He didn't say you were released by your master. He says when you became a Christian, even though you were a slave, you became a freed man. That's true, because freed from sin. But then he said to the person who was free, when you came to the Lord, you became his slave. Today, Will I respond to that call? The Lord is calling. The voice message he has left for you and me is a voice message that says, I want you to be in my family, my body. I want you to walk with me. And in that walk to be my slave. Tonight when we have our targeted Bible study, Tonight we're going to have our time when we have the little kids in a class for themselves, a couple of them and everybody else in here. We're all studying the same topic from Matthew 7, 21 to 23. And we're going to see how that without the Lord, life is nothing but a dead end. It's a dead end if I'm not willing to hear and heed the call. Today, it's interesting to me. What if God literally did call you on your cell phone and it popped up and said, God, would I want to answer? Would I want to cancel it? Would I be nervous? Would I be excited? What would happen? 
if God called my cell phone, well, he may not do that. But he's calling every day. Will I answer the call? The question is to all of us today. If you need to answer it, we're here to help you as we stand and sing.